I want to turn now to Donald Trump's speech on Saturday in Mannheim, Pennsylvania. This is just a small excerpt. Tell you. And you've got to go out. You've got to go out. And you've got to get your friends. And you've got to get everybody you know. And you've got to watch your polling booths, because I hear too many stories about Pennsylvania, certain areas. I hear too many bad stories, and we can't lose an election because of you know what I'm talking about. So go and vote, and then go check out areas, because a lot of bad things happen. And we don't want to lose for that reason. We don't want to lose, but we especially, we don't want to lose for that reason. So go over and watch, and watch carefully. So that's Donald Trump this weekend. Catherine Frankie is uh, chair of the board of the Center for Constitutional Rights. Congratulations on your 50th anniversary, the CCR's 50th anniversary. Uh, she also is a professor of law at Columbia Law School and directs the Center for Gender and Sexuality Law at Columbia. To respond to what Donald Trump said. I think this is clear dog whistle politics. Donald Trump is making a call to his constituents or to his supporters to show up and intimidate voters uh, across the country. And I have to say, well, month, some of my work is in the uh, 19th century racial history in this country, and the same kind of uh, calls went out to the Klan in the immediate post Civil War period. Show up, keep an eye on those people. They're lawless, they're not to be trusted. And I think that's very much what we're hearing now is a call to militias and others to step in and intimidate voters. And Naila, on your response. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that that was spot on. You know, across the country, people are having their right to vote threatened. You know, this is an instance where we could see a lot of at-the-poll challenges in Pennsylvania if people heed Donald Trump's call, and that could threaten individuals being able to exercise their right to vote. You know, parallel to that, at the same time, you're seeing groups across the country aggressively trying to purge individuals from the voter rolls. Um, a lot of groups like the American Civil Rights Union, not to be mistook for the American Civil Liberties Union, the Public Interest Legal Foundation, and Judicial Watch, and they're going into counties and trying to get them to remove people from the rolls. It's it's happening across the country, and it's something that we really have to watch out for this election. Nyla, you're a civil and human rights lawyer at Demos. Talk about the states you've been looking at and this issue of voter participation, who gets to vote, who doesn't, and the crackdowns around this. Sure. I mean, I think that, you know, one of the most troubling things in this election is this is the first presidential election after Shelby County v. Holder, after Section five of the Voting Rights Act has basically been dismantled. And you've seen a lot of states imposing things like same-day registration—or eliminating same-day registration, cutting early voting periods, particularly evening and weekend hours, which low-income populations and people of color have disproportionately used and relied on to be able to cast their ballot, imposing things like voter ID and also then, you know, like I mentioned before, voter purges. Um, some of the states that we've been working in specifically include Ohio. We have a case there where hundreds of thousands of infrequent voters were purged from the voter rolls last year. And a lot of those voters turned out to vote last November and this March. Um, last November, pot was on the ballot. It brought a lot of infrequent voters out. Um, this March's primary obviously brought a lot of infrequent voters out. And those individuals found out for the first time when they turned out to vote that their names were no longer on the registration rolls. Who purged them? They were purged by pursuant to a directive issued by the Secretary of State um, by the counties in Ohio.